Okay, let's add one cup of water. Now, let it simmer for 15 minutes. Drink the tea and eat the fruiting bodies. This is the only tea in the world that will lower your protein urea by 36% and your creatinine levels by 18%. Catherine here, I've been working with kidney disease patients for almost 10 years now and this tea is easily one of the most powerful natural medicine I've come across in my career. Today I will show you how to acquire the ingredients, how to prepare it and what to expect in terms of benefits from this incredibly powerful tea. Guys, if you have been following me here regularly, you may already know that I like to keep the number of herbal medicines that I recommend to a minimum. I mean, I get a lot of comments asking me to talk about this hype new product or that new thing, but more often than not, I end up not talking about them. And the reason is simple. Most patients are already taking a huge amount of pills from prescriptions. To that, we must add the vitamins. There are vitamins that kidney disease patients need to take, even if their diet is perfect. Then, there are some supplements that are so beneficial that even doctors are prescribing them, such as sodium bicarbonate and a probiotic. I mean, it's definitely a huge amount of pills and supplements, and this may create a risk for unwanted interactions and side effects. So experimenting with herbs and supplements is not something I recommend to those with kidney disease. You may now understand why I don't like to talk about herbal preparations or supplements that have not been studied in depth enough or that are just the hype of the moment. But this herbal medicine here is different. This one is something with a proven track record. In China, dialysis is not the only therapy for kidney failure. They use this herbal medicine to prevent it. And well, it works! There are studies conducted with the Western scientific method to prove that the Chinese approach at treating kidney disease really works. In this study, stage 4 CKD patients lowered their creatinine levels by an incredible 18.3% in just 3 months just thanks to a tea similar to what I will share with you today. In a review of 22 studies on it, almost 1,000 CKD patients were found to have significantly lowered their creatinine levels. Now, these patients were not on dialysis and were still following the prescribed therapies for kidney disease. So just by adding one single herb to their regimen, these patients greatly reduced their creatinine levels, reduced proteinuria and also hemoglobin and serum albumin levels. Levels. This basically means an all-around improvement in kidney health and kidney function. What this also implies is that this tea is safe and that there are no serious interactions with the most common prescriptions for kidney disease. Okay, I bet some of you guys already know what this is. Yes, I'm talking about Cordyceps, one of the most powerful herbal medicines for kidney disease. Now, what not many people know about Cordyceps is that its main benefit is not to lower creatinine levels. Cordyceps is incredibly powerful when it comes to stopping proteinuria. Why is it so important to lower proteinuria levels? If there is one thing that can make all the difference between ending up in dialysis and reversing kidney disease, it's proteinuria levels. Proteinuria levels can actually tell your future. Fact: Having unusually high levels of protein in the urine means your kidney function is going to get worse. Fast. And while for those without diagnosed kidney disease, seeing a foam in the urine means that their kidneys are actually being damaged, the best nephrologists actually use proteinuria levels to reliably predict if a CKD patient will have kidney failure in the near future. Yes, this level here is even more important than GFR or creatinine when looking at your analysis. So next time you get tested for kidney function, pay special attention to your ACR and your proteinuria levels, no matter what stage of CKD you may be in. So now the question is, should you take cordyceps in pill form or buy dried and make tea? 
both forms have their own pros and cons. Cordyceps extract may be made to guarantee a certain amount of cordycepin, the most powerful active ingredient in this fungus. This is important because in one of the most complete studies on cordyceps for CKD, researchers were able to isolate what components of the cordyceps can treat kidney problems, which is cordycepin. So if you want to buy cordyceps in extract form, double check that the producer was able to certify cordycepin percentage. But on the other hand, there is more to cordyceps than cordycepin alone. Research has proved that cordyceps military bodies are made up to 35% beta-glucans. Now, beta-glucans are amazing. Beta-glucans are soluble fibers that come from the cell walls of certain bacteria, fungi, and yeasts. They have some incredible properties for heart health and they are also able to reduce cholesterol absorption. Apart from beta-glucans, Cordyceps militaris in his final stage of growth of forming and dispersing its spores develops very unique and powerful compounds such as adenosine, cardamine, ergosterol, and vitamin B12. All these compounds have unique properties and vitamin B12 alone is probably worth the extra time spent making the tea. So to summarize, there are a variety of medicinal compounds present in the dried cordyceps that are really good for us and that are part of the reason why this fungus is so great against skinny disease. Okay guys, ready to make some tea? Let's take a look at the science of brewing cordyceps tea. So you've got your mushrooms. Now, how to use them to their full potential? The trick to getting a quality, functional mushroom tea is proper brewing. Members at Buster University have been conducting tests with cardiceps and has found some really exciting results. They have tested fresh versus dry. They have experimented with water temperature and brew time. So what we will see next is the perfect scientifically proven way of brewing cordyceps tea. First of all, we need 250 milliliters of water. That's about one cup. And also we want to use dried cordyceps, five or six fruiting bodies. This is the perfect ratio according to scientists at Buster University. And I really believe in the research they make there because as you may already know, if you watch my videos, Buster University is the most prestigious natural medicine university in the world. In my recent video, I talk about its founder, Dr. Joseph Pizorno, who shared with us his strategy to stop kidney disease progression. It's up here, by the way, if you want to know more. So. What we want to do is to put five to six fruiting bodies in 250 milliliters of water. Keep boiling cordyceps bodies in water for one minute. Now, after one minute of the hard boil, put the flame at the lowest setting. Cover the vessel with a lid and let it simmer for another 15 minutes. The studies have concluded that it is best to brew the dried mushrooms for 15 minutes covered. Longer steep times degraded the compounds and shorter times did not extract nearly enough. This amount will brew a pot and 8 oz cup of tea, but you may be flexible with the volume of water and increase if desired. Serve and drink your refreshing cordyceps tea, preferably after breakfast and lunch. And remember, never throw away the bodies. Eat them or toss them into your meals or soups since they are incredibly rich in vitamins and nutrients, great for a renal diet. And if you want to know what vitamin-rich superfoods are a must in a kidney diet, watch my video up here and this is all for today. Thank you for watching.